actually allowed Walkmans at school. So I borrowed a Walkman off a friend of mine and uh, buried away in this little cubby hole, put it on, put the tape in, put the earphones on, and press play. Oh. Everybody put your hands in the air! Everybody put your hands in the air! Everybody put your hands in the air! We're gonna rock it now! Woo! No, no, yes, got me back! Woo, no, no, no! Woo! No. Right now! Now we hear this! Yeah. So that was a tape that was recording from a rave from like 1992, something like that. And it blew my mind. Like, completely blew my mind. Um, oh, where are we? One sec. By the way, this is the first time I've ever given a keynote speech, so if I go wrong, just bear with me. <laughs> but yeah, so just that energy. You know, all those people screaming over the mic, all that music, and then, you know, I found out that there were like 10,000 people there, and I was like, what the fuck? This is insane. And then, then I knew that that's what the rest of my life was all about. So, I wanted to get involved with it. I was just like, you know, how, how do you do it? Uh, so I asked around, and basically, Everyone, all the, all the older kids at school said, yeah, well, you know, if you really want to be in that game, you need to learn to compose and produce. So that's what I did for years, actually. I spent a long time. I started out with like eight track, eight track tape machines, sort of laying down, actually like playing drums, trying to sound like a house beat or something, but playing drums didn't really work actually, it was a bit shit. But, um, and then, you know, then a couple of years later, someone gave me a freely distributable copy of Cubase, I think. Um, so I got to grips with that. And, uh, and then, you know, I finally, finally decided that I was going to be a musician. So I invested in a copy of Pro Tools, and then I spent years and years and years learning Pro Tools. And then, eventually, I actually graduated to releasing some music. Um, so here's a track from uh, my first album, which is called Proagonist. The track is called Open Mic. <laughs> You get the picture. That was, uh, <laughs> woo! Thank you. <laughs> so, after that, I kind of, you know, I was, work I was trying to work out how to develop my music further. So, I got into, I got into songwriting. And uh, the last album I did, um, Listening Tree, uh, was pretty much all songs. And, um, it, you know, I, I spent like two years on it, just plugging away, just me and my computer in the studio. Um, but here's a clip. <laughs>
that was uh, that was Family Galaxy. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Gracias and all that. So yeah, production. After the end of this sort of big music making binge of ten years, and I realised I was pretty lonely. I'd spent hours, you know, hours and hours in the studio, and it was, you know, it wasn't even I wasn't even performing anything. I was just moving these little boxes around and micro edits and tweaking MIDI parameters and all these really geeky things, and it drove me insane. I tell you, it drove me insane. Um, but so I so I wanted to do something. I wanted to take all these um, techniques that you have in the studio and then make them make them make it possible to play them live. And this was kind of before the days of Ableton Live and so on. So. I had, uh, I didn't, you know, I th it didn't exist. The software and the hardware, it didn't exist. So I realized that if I was actually going to get to do what I wanted to do, that I'd have to learn to invent and develop my own machines. So I went on a hunt to find how, you know, how, how I could do this, what, how it was possible. And then I found, I stumbled across this thing that, how, how many of you are, mus are music geeks? Who's a music geek? Put your hand up. I guess most of you, music geeks? Not so many. Or are you just non-English speakers? <laughs> what's, the, what's the Spanish for music geek? Hmm? Melomena. It's a music geek, okay. But anyway, so there's not that many of you, okay. Well, anyway, I found this thing called Reactor. Oh, uh, yeah. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's by this company called Native Instruments, who I do a lot of work with now. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a modular visual programming environment for audio. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but it's, it's basically, it's, it's kind of like C, um, but you do, you do everything with blocks um, and wires. And um, and it's got all the audio stuff dealt with, so you don't have to deal with programming kind of audio, audio stuff like that. Um, but you can create anything. You can make drum machines, synths, effects, loopers, sequences, etc. So I've been using this for about ten years, and I've developed um, all my own machines um, using using this thing. So this is what it this is what it looks like under the hood. It's a spa it's like it's carnage. <laughs> it's, uh, um, so anyway, way before all of this happened, I uh, I kind of had this. I will. I was a massive fan of Jungle. Any fans of Jungle? <laughs> Woo! A few fans of Jungle. Anybody hate Jungle? Oh, that's good. Okay. Well, you're going to get a bit of Jungle later. So, um, <laughs> um, so I had this. I kind of had this dream. I used to sit at the back of class at school. Um, thinking about all these cr crazy cut-up jungle breaks, and like just tapping out, tapping out breaks with my fingers, you know, kind of like. Oh, that doesn't work. Okay, I was gonna do that. <laughs> um, so anyway, the first thing I, I thought it would be so cool to be able to make jungle with your fingers. So this is the first thing that I made, and uh, in Reactor, here it is. Um, and I'll show you a bit of it now. It's basically you can take you can take any loop and you can kind of turn it into jungle with your fingers. So um, da -da -da -dun, da -da -dun. okay. Oh, one sec. So what I can do is then take take that loop and just play it with my fingers.
just like that. So that was like, that was the very beginning of my own software project. Uh, so after that, I kept on adding different functions, adding like looping and drum machines and synths and voice sampling and so on. Um, and then eventually, I got in touch with Native Instruments, uh, the people who make the, this programming language called Reactor. And, uh, and we decided that we'd actually make some products <laughs> out of it. So uh, the first one we did was called The Finger. Does anybody know The Finger? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, music geeks know The Finger. Cool. Um, so I'm going to transition to my other mic. Oh, yes. OK, that's working. Cool. So I wanted to make something, because it was going to be a product, um, and it was going to be something that everybody could use, I wanted it to be really, really simple, but really, really powerful as well. Um, so I kind of came up with this idea that I wanted to play effects um, on my keyboard. So you can come in so you can see what's going on here. Um, so I can take any signal that's coming in, like my voice now, and I can just apply those of effects to it, like this. Uh, hello. Uh oh, there seems to be a problem. There's always one. Okay. The real software works very well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's quite extreme. Um, but you could do all sorts of um, processing effects and you can kind of apply them all on top of each other. Like Like so. So uh, that is the, the finger. And then after that, I um, did another product called the mouth. Anyone got any more, more fans of the mouth as well? And the mouth, again, it's, it's just really simple. Um, it's basically a synth that you can just sing into, um, and it turns your voice into a synth. Um, and I've got a, a version of it here, which I'll show you. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Sorry, I'm getting mic confusion. <laughs> See, you don't even have to sing. It's that simple. <laughs> Okay, so now, by the time it had all these bits, put them all together, um, I had a machine. Hello. I'll try this one. <laughs> so I finally had a machine that I could really perform and improvise with and do all that stuff that I had, um, use all those sounds and technologies that I had in the studio, but I had to kind of sit down for hours ago <coughs> with. And I could really just play it with my hands. So, shall I give it a go? Do you want a little bit of a demo? <laughs> cool. Okay. Could you just turn the monitors up a bit, please? Just a little bit, thank you. Um, what, sort of, what sort of speed? Fast, slow, medium, sort of a techno? Medium, we, medium, kind of like. <coughs> Is that okay?
Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. So, that was what it was all about for me, basically. I had so much fun doing that. Let's move to a mic that works. I had so much fun doing that. Uh, all right, what? One sec. I have to change some files here now. File. Dun 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 dun. Okay, where's my zapper? Where's my zapper? So, so yeah, every time I do that, it makes me feel that music is an action. It's not, it's not a recording. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's something, it's something we do. It's not something to own. It's something that happens. You know, as I was saying earlier, it's like folk music. You know, it, it just... It arises. It's an experience, not a product. So, where does this leave the music industry? The poor old music industry. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of having hard times at the moment. And, well, everybody, everybody knows why it's having hard times at the moment. Because, you know, no one's buying records. Um, but... I think actually the reason is that the whole recorded music is, it was basically when recording technology came along, um, it, was, it was an opportunity, it was a business opportunity to make money out of music. Um, and because of the technology of the time, like 100 years ago, um, it was very difficult for um, people to kind of make, to, to record and then distribute music. Um, so... Um, it, you know, b this business model kind of worked really well for a while um, until we got the, uh, un until sharing technology came along and that kind of killed off that business model. Um, but not because it's evil, <laughs> um, not, not because sharing technology is evil, but because that business model was just based on some kind of, kind of like a technological fluke, really. Um, so now we kind of we need a new um, new new business model actually based on the real value of music, um, and for me, the real value of music um, is is actually how you feel when you engage with it. That's all it is. It's just an experience. Uh, the more engaged you feel with the music, the better the music is. It is quite simply that the music sounds better with you. Um, so the music industry does kind of engage with social networks and so on a bit, but generally it does this so it can sell to you um, its classic products like albums, merchandise, gig tickets, and so on. But I think that the real future of the music industry is basically the democratization of music. You still need, you, we'll still need recorded music, um, but kind of think of it, it's like, it's like going on holiday and the photos that you take when you go on holiday. So if you said, if you said to someone, right, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going on holiday, why are you going on holiday? Well, because I, I want to I have the pictures from the holiday. So, so what, so you'd spend like $1,000 to go on holiday um, just to get the pictures? Well, of course not. The idea of the holiday is the experience. You want to go, you want to, you want to feel great, you want to walk around in the sand, you want to swim in the sea, um, and you want the photos because they remind you of that time that you felt good. And that's what recorded music is for, is to remind you of the time when you're at that gig, when you're all making music together and this crazy shit happened and you were so drunk or you were so high and you pulled this girl and then it was just really amazing and so on. And that's what, that's what recorded music is for. It's a memento. So I reckon the future of music is basically, well, the future of the music industry is a combination of like, music software companies, you know, like Native Instruments and so on, Music content companies like, you know, the old people like Universal and Warner and so on, uh, maybe, I don't know. Um, gaming, 
Um, and then um, the sort of artists, uh, uh, musicians who, who kind of want to actually interact with you and respond. Um, and of course, the main ingredient, which is you, or you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so anyway, along the, uh, oh shit, this hasn't worked. <laughs> Have to wait a bit. Um, so, along the uh, road of trying to uh, come up with ideas. Sorry, can we go back to that one? Visual dudes. Uh, okay, right. So I made, I made an interactive EP. It was one kind of idea I had that maybe um, the way forward for, for music is to, instead of finished tracks, um, you can actually have, uh, you, can, you can actually play tracks the way you want. So they're kind of like games. Um, so I made this uh, interactive EP, we can go over here now, <laughs> um, which is basically, it's like, a, it's like an unfinished track. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit on this screen, um, but, but here it is. It's just very simple. You play it all with your mouse pad. It's just a number of different gestures, but you can control it how you want to control it. Okay, so that's it. It's really simple. <laughs> Thank you. And actually, if you go to my website, um, you can download it for free. Um, well, at Thank you. Yeah, no. Please, take it. Well, okay, it's that kind of special kind of free. I actually, I slightly want your email address. Um, but if you give me your email address, then you'll get it for free. <laughs> um, so, but still, the interactive EP, it kind of misses, it sort of misses the, the thing that I really want to do with all you guys. Um, and this is the thing that I really like doing, is when, when I let go of control, I just get into the crowd. And this is, yeah, this is just like the best feeling for me getting off the stage and out into the crowd. At first I started doing it with, I've got this wireless setup, um, which I don't actually have ready to go at the moment, but um, maybe I'll use it later, I don't know. Um, and originally I'd just come out and just do this whole wireless show outside and that felt really good. Um, but then I kind of wanted to take this to the next level because I'd made, I'd found this machine. I'd made, sorry, I'd made this machine um, for sampling. I said, well, why, you know, why don't I just sample you guys? Just get out into the crowd, give you the mic, and, and sample it. 
make music out of what you're doing. So this is what um, I've been doing recently. And, oh, okay. Just going to have to reload something again. Uh, the problem with all these self-made things is that they take a long time to load. Uh, so we could play a little game. <laughs> Angry Birds. <laughs> um, okay. So basically what we're going to do next is I'm going to give you the mic. Um, and I want, just want you to pass it around. And I'm gonna take, it's going to automatically take the sounds that you make into it. They could be whatever, like screams, cries, shouts, farts, like weird kind of popping noises or whatever. And, uh, um, and then I can just make music out of it, which, I mean, you know, it's different music, but it's fun. Uh, we're almost there. Almost there. Okay. Uh -oh -oh, is it working? You never can tell if it's working. Okay. One sound, pass it on, or whatever, whatever you want to do. I want to say like, Baby, 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 ba
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's what it's all about. Isn't that fun? <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you said, but I agree with you. I really agree with you. <laughs> oh, well, I hope, I hope that that's not something terrible, but I don't know. Who knows? You never know. Oh, can I have my microphone back, please? Uh, oh, it, it, it exists! Thank you. One day, this microphone is going to go into the big microphone box in the sky. <laughs> or in someone's pocket, maybe. <laughs> so, so, yeah. That is fun. So I thought, how can we, how can we kind of take this to the next level? Um, kind of broaden it out even more because, you know, with a mic, it's kind of cool, but at the end of the day, if you went to one hour of that, by the end, you might be a little bit, I get it. Uh, but, but I thought, wouldn't it be cool if you could do that, but with like loads of different sounds? And how, you know, how could you do that in a, in a, a sort of a meaningful way? Um, and I figured out that Online jamming is the way forward. So last November, I think, I had my first online jam uh, using SoundCloud, um, which I guess everybody knows about SoundCloud. Does everybody know about SoundCloud? Yeah, SoundCloud is good. I like SoundCloud. Um, so I just got people to kind of send, send sounds, recordings they'd made, beats, um, loads of all, all sorts of stuff and any kind of source of material and just send it to me um, live while I was doing this webcast um, and it felt so good it was really really good um, and uh, then in uh, February this year uh, I tried another one um, this time it was actually in a venue in, in an actual club um, and that was also really cool and here's a little bit of uh, footage from that online jam Hopefully. Somebody says, everybody loves a 303. That's got to be good news in my book. Yeah. Call me old-fashioned, you know, but I probably am a bit old-fashioned now, to be honest. <laughs> So yeah, you get the picture. Um, thank you. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's just it's just like it's just in its infancy. It's only just begun, really. Um, the 
the technology is still, you know, it needs a lot of a lot of developing. Um, and actually, at the moment, um, I'm working on a whole new machine that's um, kind of optimized for doing um, live music and online kind of collaborative jamming and so on. And I'm also working with um, some guys from SoundCloud to, to build um, a proper online stage that makes the whole process of online jamming really easy. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just totally stoked about it. It's, it really feels like finally um, I've, I've found the way that I actually really want to interact with music or to kind of use music as a tool to connect with people um, and to kind of create experiences that just is just so much fun for for everyone. So, so on Monday night I was supposed to play, um, but it didn't happen because there have been some kind of licensing problems. But then we were hoping that these problems would be sorted out, um, and that on Saturday, um, for the closing of Campus Party. Mexico 2011, that we do a big online jam on this stage here, where everybody, all these geeks and nerds and hackers, can all send in their sounds. Um, and we can also test out some of the new technology that we've been developing. Um, but I'm hoping that this is going to happen. Um, but we still haven't got the go-ahead yet. But if you guys really want it to happen, then please just tweet about it. Just say, online jam, midnight on Saturday. Keep tweeting about it, and then maybe it'll happen. So tweet with the hashtag CPMX3, and uh, hopefully it will happen. So that's it for me. Um, well, in terms of the, uh, the talk, all these slides and so on. So thank you so much for watching and listening and participating. Um, this is where you can find me on my various channels. Um, and now, if we've got time, how are we doing for time? Oh, we've got 10 minutes, wow. Um, so if you have any questions, then tweet them to, um, okay, go on, a direct question. We were, we were gonna be all modern and use Twitter, but play something. Oh, do you want <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Um, right. Right. What shall I play? What do you want to hear? My pretties. Hmm? Techno. Like boom digga boom digga boom digga techno. Like that.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! All right. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> ah, go on, go on. Okay, even though I loved just what you just did and all that you explained, and I agree that the future brings uh, a lot of uh, democratization for the music and the union and the participation of everybody, what value do you give and what future do you see on a good old-fashioned set of musicians just performing their music to, uh, and the crowd just enjoying, just listening? Um, yeah, well, I d lots. Basically, I, I think electronic music um, is not the replacement for acoustic music at all. Uh, I think 
um, electronic music can learn a lot from acoustic music. And I suppose this is what I'm saying, is that um, the, uh, the, the, the acoustic approach, uh, the folk music kind of approach, is, um, is kind of the natural way of, of doing music, the experience and so on. So, I mean, I think, I think when the technology, when the electronic music technology gets better and it's going to be easier to integrate electronics with acoustic instruments, then I think totally there's room for um, them coming together. And of course, there's still room for the traditional um, just acoustic bands um, playing, you know, four guys in a bar playing jazz. I mean, that is still really cool. And, and it's, you know, when you go to one of these events where people are, are doing that, it just, you know, you really feel connected, the real connection's there, so totally. There's loads of room for acoustic instruments. Um, any questions from Twitter? Who's, uh, where's Philippe, is he here? Or, uh, who? Another, question. Another question, okay, cool, yeah. Well, more than a question, it's just to inform you. <laughs> There's a Mexican uh, group named Nortec, I don't know oh, if you heard, yeah, about I heard. It. So they mix acoustic with um, electronic music, and they also develop their own software to create that kind of music. So actually, oh. there's another DJ who has like um, uh, like ocean shrimps. I forget the name, and that m mixes with electronic devices. So there are a lot of people who are already doing that, and yeah, it's totally. awesome. So. Yeah. I think technology and acoustic is not, uh, you know, against each other. So yeah. it's awesome what you're doing. I to yeah, I totally agree. Um, I mean, I I've, done, I've done a bit of playing myself. Um, oh, by the way, I don't think that I'm the only musician making my own software as well. I know there are lots of other people doing it. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I've done quite a lot of jamming with acoustic instrument, instrument players, and yeah, I like it. It's fun. Hi. Hi. I was wondering uh, how flexible this system is according to different musical structures, uh, because I've seen this uh, electronic music uh, follows uh, this progressive uh, rhythm, and it's, not, it, it's quite predictable. And uh, like, for example, jazz, how would you jam live with uh, different musical structures with this, how flexible it is? It's, it's pretty flexible, actually. Um, uh, I mean, I could do some, yeah, I mean, you can be very flexible with the tempo. I mean, I, um, you can sort of, you can be completely arrhythmic and do sort of the kind of just shapes. That's not great, but it's more, I mean, I've played with jazz um, musicians before. Where's he gone? Oh, there you are, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I've played with jazz musicians before, doing very kind of abstract stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's obviously, it's more towards the... So, so why uh, assume that music industry is uh, going that way? If, if there's a limit in the mu musical structure for the, well, to me for this platform to work in that way? Oh, well, I, I don't think there is. Um, I think, I mean, I think the machine that I have at the moment has, is very technically limited. Um, and I, I think it's just, I mean, I, I feel like I'm just at the very beginning or, or this whole movement of live producing or live electronics is at the very beginning. Um, and there are so many kind of interface questions um, and interface problems that need to be solved um, and t uh, before we, we have real kind of flexibility in style and also the flexibility within a software platform to allow an artist doing live electronic music to find exactly how they want to do it. I mean, you know, for example, Ableton, you know, Ableton is very flexible to an extent and it kind of wants you to make dance music but it's very flexible at letting you make live music and making it make it sound like your own. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi there. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, well, I think that beyond the music itself, you're taking this to a style of democracy of music. So now when we talk about music, we sell like the French techno scene, like some people in London are doing like raves and that kind of stuff. Now that you're doing all these online jammings, is it not going like to be like a global scene, like taking the music to the different level where everyone in every part of the world basically can contribute to their own favorite DJs or even bands, rock bands can start doing this as well. So it's going to take this to a different level. Have you think about it? Have you ever imagined how far this can go? Well, um, yeah, I guess I have. And actually, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting point because when I did the first online jam, um, obviously, I did it in England. And I, actually, there were a couple of tweets, emails, and Facebook messages say, uh, from people in America or, or, say, people in Mexico or um, Australia or um, somewhere in different time zones um, where they couldn't join in because they were all at work. So, so actually, um, I think, yeah, it will. It'll de it could definitely globalize things a lot. But I think there'll still be kind of some cultural kind of, bar well, n not necessarily barriers, but there'll be kind of time zone tribes, <laughs> maybe. Um. Well, uh, basically, where it's uh, world now is taking that over. Uh, a lot of people is interacting with a lot of people through Twitter. Most of these geeks around here don't sleep at all. So, <laughs> so I, I think it's a lot of future, and I, I, I really uh, appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I really admire that. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Alguien más preguntas? Okay. Yeah, hi. Uh, what kind of sounds are you searching for when you're making uh, the jammings or your music? Not only technology, but uh, what are you searching for? Uh, special sounds, uh, whatever, uh, or everything? I don't, I don't know. I think special sounds kind of change or well, for me you know certain sounds that i find really special just change about every week <laughs> and uh, so i'll be into a particular sound or, or no maybe maybe more of a matter of months um but so i think kind of anything any 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 sound um you can that you can take and do something with um at any sorry at any time yeah, well, w I mean, with the online jams, um, at, at the moment, there's no kind of, um, you know, there's no tagging and so on. So I literally, I, I, I just, the sounds come in, I just play them, and I have to do what I can with what I've got. Um, I mean, it's actually one of, the, one of the ideas I've been talking about with people is to um, find a way of um, tagging sounds kind of in real time as they come in. Um, so you have like a different, you'll have like a beats inbox and a bass inbox and like a voice inbox and so on. Um, yeah. Wait, wait. Um, would you share with us your five, your top five of bands or artists? Please. Uh, this is all, this is really difficult. <laughs> I always I always really resist. <laughs> uh, um, well, th I, you know, people who kind of I suppose okay, the people who really inspired me in terms of electronic musicians. But um, Future Sound of London, massive fan. Um, woo, yeah. Um, Aphex Twin. I mean, anybody into it? Yeah, anybody into electronic electronic music? I used to be, I used to be a big like Aphex Twin fan. I've kind of Maybe grown out of it a bit now. Um, uh, yeah, well, that's two. Um, actually, I have a really, s I have, I have a guilty pleasure, a secret guilty pleasure. <laughs> Jamiroquai. <laughs> it's one. It's like I, 
whenever I'm with my sister, because, you know, we kind of, obviously, I grew up with my sister, um, and we, we grew up in the middle of the countryside, and the only way you can get around in the countryside is by driving. Um, so uh, and we just kind of had this tape of Jamiroquai in the car, and we just sing along and drive around these country lanes. Everything is good and green. I'm here again, and I don't suppose I'm coming to... So, yeah, so th anyway, that's... <laughs> Can I get away with three? Thank you. <laughs> Nadie más tiene preguntas? Bueno, I think that okay. concludes our question period then. Well, thank you very much once again, uh, everyone. And hopefully, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully this online jam will happen. I really, I really hope it can happen. Um, so let's see. Let's see where it goes. Okay, on behalf of Canvas Party, thank you very much for coming here and giving this wonderful talk. I can't speak for everyone else. I was really entertained. I thought it was amazing. Cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> thank you. Till next time. Thank you.